Before heading out to the bus to work more on the underbody compartment doors, Aaron and I went on a hike in the Canadian wilderness to hang out in the tranquility of nature. Often we get so focused on the details of our schoolie that we forget to go out and experience time together because that's what we're working towards. Nature brings us inspiration away from the noise of the city and is a place we can clear our heads while connecting with each other. We look forward to more time in nature, homesteading in the future, and becoming self-reliant. Building our schoolie represents escaping the chaos of civilization, as well as finding our piece of earth where we can grow nutritious food while living free. Now time to get back to work. Counting rivets. Kind We're hoping. Sheet, huh? Yeah, it's like a crazy snowstorm outside today. The wind is just howling, and um, yeah, the roads are bad. So. We're hoping we have enough rivets for this project so we don't have to leave. But we're still probably missing things for this project, eh? Yeah, probably. Like sheet metal? Yes, like sheet metal. And, and, in, and the door opener things. The latches. That. And come to find out there's a sheet metal shortage right now. Yeah. So we're not sure if we're gonna be able to get what we need. So I don't know what we're gonna do. <laughs> we'll figure it out. And I don't know if we have enough scrap sheet metal to like Frankenstein the inside. Mm. Lucky we kept the bus skins. Yeah. We'll um, repurpose those we for sure. Off. Yeah. So we're going to reuse that, but. Yeah. Oh, today we're making the doors. Oh, yeah. If you didn't already know. Welcome to today's video. Yeah. So in last video, we made the frames. Yeah. In this video, we're going to attempt to make the doors all in one video. And then we're pretty much done with the structure and closing off the underbody. Yeah. I think yeah. the only things left would be the latch and gas struts. So yeah. I don't know. We'll have to uh, see what happens with all of that. <laughs> Getting stuff is crazy and being on a two month crunch is also a little crazy because we're like ordering a million things at once, which yeah. is like, it's a bit scary because we're hoping everything shows up. Yeah, and we've already had stuff uh, say, oh, your item's been delivered, and you open the box, and you're just like, well, it's not in the freaking box. Like our four-aught wire? Yeah. Like, that was an expensive one to forget, Amazon. Yeah. We really didn't want to buy heck? it from there, but whatever. Yeah, so only right. place we can find it. So I'm gonna get back to counting a rivet and try not to lose any. And I'll start cutting some square tube for the door. Yay. Yeah. Enjoy the sounds of cutting metal. But before then, enjoy the sound of the crackling fire. I put my ear pro in. Ooh. Thank you for your service. You are awesome. <laughs> All right, y'all. So for the doors, like with everything that we do, we get a measure. Um, so measuring the absolute measurements, uh, we have 54 inches on this one and 53 and 15 sixteenths. So we're gonna make these doors to be a quarter inch smaller than the opening. That way there's about an eighth of an inch on each side um, for just room to, for the door to actually travel. That'll give us plenty of space to, for it to press against the weather stripping that we've so uh, masterfully crafted around this opening here. Masterfully crafted. So I think it's gonna seal real nice. Yeah, real nice. Um, so we'll start by cutting some angle or some square tube. <sighs> Thank <laughs> you. 
It is freaking cold. Yeah, it is. A lot of what we're doing out here is goes... sitting in front of the wood burning stove, yeah, we're warming not doing up. Jack shit. <laughs> uh, a lot of what we're doing out here takes preparation because we need to keep the stove going. So we're constantly, like every day almost, we have to cut skids or pallets up. Yeah. Probably every other day we do like a huge load and that takes up time. So right now what I'm doing is just cutting these babies up and preparing them. I cut up these guys. Oh, look at that stack, nice. Preparing for the fire. Doing this kind of job has definitely made me more comfortable with the circular saw, which is really nice because like I've used it a bit and you've seen that in other videos, I'm sure. But um, it's still kind of a scary tool, I guess. But since I started doing pallets with Brian, it's helping me feel more comfortable. So every day, stretching and growing, that's part of this whole thing. Um, I feel like I have to step up to the plate even more now that we have a deadline so that I can help Brian. The guy can't do everything. So I have to stretch myself outside of my comfort zone to get comfortable with the tools. Know what I'm saying? New toys for the boys. Ah, uh, we've got a new diamond wheel in. Now we used one of these for our entire demolition up until a couple weeks ago, and it lasted for cutting through all the ribs that we needed to for the windows, most of the metal for the underbody storage. This blade here lasts forever, but it wears out over time. So now we're gonna throw a brand new one here on the, oops. Now we're gonna throw a brand new one here on the uh, angle grinder and uh, do some notching. Super excited about this. It kind of looks like a piece of cardboard. Yeah, but it's got diamonds infused like into the edge. Diamonds. And it's got a super thin kerf cut on it. And it's metal, so it stays the same size the entire time. It doesn't change sizes on you. Tell them why you didn't like the last one. Uh, the last one has uh, really, it, it's got a really rough cutting edge, really thick kerf cut. So it like grabbed the metal really fast. While this one here, it seems to cut through it a lot better. Uh, and doesn't grab as, as much, so I you like that. That's a big difference. Huge difference. What are you up to? Um, pallets. I am. Um, I am. Ask me again. <laughs> <laughs> what are you up to? I'm preparing boards for the ceiling and other projects. Very cool. So that requires me pulling all the nails and stuff out of them or making executive decisions. Like if there's like staples and stuff. I'm not pulling those out. That's and pretty exciting. We'll just burn those, but yeah, it's exciting because we have a lot of wood. As you can tell, we look like hoarders. Um, <laughs> it's trying to get crazy in here. We need to process this wood so we can start building out the inside. And we're so close to being able to build out the inside. We're just waiting on a few things like our water filtration system on route, four out wire on route. Once we're done with the electric and the plumbing, then we can do a leak test in our plumbing and then we can put up the walls like you've all been waiting for. Oh, but first insulation, because you guys really been wondering about that. <laughs> Good job. Thanks.
So not only are there nails going this way on this one, but there's nails going the other way. So um, what I'll do is take this and hammer them. You all right? You guys okay? Yeah. I'll make sure you get the real effect. <laughs> get the real hit. Real hit. <laughs> Those little guys there, yeah. they are uh, planar destroyers. Oh yeah, <laughs> the secrets yeah. beneath the wood. Dirty little secrets beneath the wood. This one has a ton in them, but I do think that would look pretty badass on something. Oh yeah, for so sure. I'm just gonna have at it. Yeah. This is a pretty good piece of wood, it's I guess. A, it's like a nice piece. So now, if this was all bolted together or welded or riveted, then this piece here would fit right there like that. Cool. So we're getting ready to weld some right angles here. Um, so this needs to go in that notch there. This is the bottom. There will be a top piece also. Um, so I'm putting a couple of pieces of wood here so that the builder square can be suspended because we don't have one of those uh, welding magnetic squares. So we'll just kind of work with what we have. So that makes a perfect 90 degree there. And so the idea is that if we can make a perfect 90 degree in every corner, then it'll end up being a nice squared rectangle. And then from there, having this plywood here, this plywood's a nice straight piece, nice and flat. We'll be able to, uh, then weld this up, tack it, tack the next one, tack all four of them. And then after they're tacked, then we could dry fit it, make sure it's nice. And then if it's nice and if it's in the hole real, real nicely, then we'll go ahead and finish the welds off and then clean them up. So this is how I'm squaring it up. That's a good idea. Two and three eighths. Nice. Fifty three and a hair over three quarters. Fifty three and a hair over three quarters. <laughs> Which is perfect because we're going for we're, ah! we're going for uh, fifty three and eleven sixteenths, which is a hair over three, uh, 
in between five eighths and three quarters. So I think that this will work. The door fit in the hole. Wow. Nice work. Nice. Nailed I, it. Nice, nice. Oh, uh, I think we're going to have a ceiling door. Yes. really nice great welding nice great flap disc and look how smooth that is it's cool to see how good brian's getting at welding it's coming along isn't it yeah there's one corner that is like stupid good is that it that's pretty good these nice. two that one oh. look at this one Nice. That's great. Cool. That's good to see. There you go, silly. Thank you, silly. That's great. <laughs> see that? Perfect seal all the way around it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Good job, man. Oh, it is so exciting to see the work materialized right before our eyes, putting the pieces together, welding them, and then seeing the excellent work that Aaron did with the flap disc. It really looks excellent and it fits wonderfully. Yeah, it does. And it's funny how you like make up in your head, this is going to be the hardest project ever. It's probably the easiest part of the entire underbody storage so far but brian did a ton of planning yeah so i think that that has really helped make it a lot more smooth so darn to it and run all right now we just have uh three more door holes to make just like that door hole. rinse and repeat get one right and then you continue on with the plan yes <laughs> In the last video, you would have seen I made a lot of humpity humps to fill in the edge of the, this guy right here. And then Brian welded that in. Well, I have eight more of those to make um, because Sorry. the edge of the doors, we're gonna use the original door. So I need to make one cap for every single side, which takes me up to eight of those. So I better get to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> While she's getting to work, I'm gonna be doing some more welding. We got those two done over there. Now we've got two more on the dark side of the bus. Wow. Doing the cold side. Oh shit, that made me dizzy. <laughs> Hey, guess what? Chicken butt. We got a half face cord or something of wood. A face cord. One face cord. That's a face cord. Uh, maple. The reason we got it is because we'd rather burn that for our first burn in our... Can I tell them? Little wood stove. Little wood stove that we got. We need to do a practice run. So we are like, let's get some nice wood for that because we don't really want to burn stinky old pallets in there. Nah. Cool, huh? <laughs> shit out check this out i literally just took a few minutes to do this with a flap disc people <laughs> i was using the grinding wheel before and i think the grinding wheel had just seen better days 
brand new flap disc. Boom shakalaka. Yeah. She loves it. Oh she my gosh. It. Oh my gosh. Fits like a glove. Like a glove. Like a glove. I am so impressed. It is perfect. I just kind of, I don't even have to press that hard. The grinding wheel is like pushing. The metal is getting so hot. This is amazing. I'm going to bang the rest of these out in a few minutes. Bye bye. Fingering. Look at that. Oh, wow. A few minutes. And putting it up against there is just perfect. Oh, that's going to be great. That's going to make it so much easier to <laughs> weld in. Good job, babe. <laughs> okay, bye. So something I've learned that's really important especially when you have little hands and big gloves, is make sure when you're doing something with the grinding wheel that is super little and your gloves could get in the way to just pull them on as tight as possible so there's not a lot of extra bulk at your fingertips. Yeah.